what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! In front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. Up dog, my man, fella Friday. I love the tarp. My man, what a nice treat here to be sitting here uh, from my living room in Aspen. Uh, I got the dog locked up, so I'll be quiet, Ruby, over there. Ruby, and, Ruby, uh, Ruby, Ruby! Nice to be here, bud. I thought I'd, I thought I'd sport the fr- uh, fella Friday. You know, you get these things on saucehockey.com. How, how are you? How soft um, is that tea, bud? Be honest, how soft is that tea? It's buttery. Yeah. It's buttery. Like I say like I say to most of the fellas out there, it's tough because the girls, they steal them. I know. They steal them. They and do. Then you know what? You just order a couple more. doesn't matter. It's funny. You know, it's large, funny. extra large, double X, whatever, whatever it takes. It's funny you say that because every time Mac Miller comes to town, she just, like every night it's a new missing curfew tarp for her. And I'm like, babe, like, you can just wear the one you wore last night. You no, know? like, I mean, although in her defense up, dog, I got 50 missing curfew tees in my closet. It's all I got. I'm such a loser. It's all I got. I got like. Four other black tees, and I got all missing curfew. That's my wardrobe nowadays. It's not. It's not impressive, fella. Let's uh, let's just get <laughs> one thing straight here: is that uh, fellas, they're not all going to look like Mac Miller when they put these tarps on, right? There's only there's only one Mac Miller out there making them look like that. Yeah, that that is that is true. But listen, let's hey, just get that out. You look like you're in your basement. Is this a basement you're in, or uh, up? I've been buddy, in your house. This is where uh, are this you? Is, where? No, this is prime time living area, bud. I'm just sitting on one of these nice chairs, Christina. But she brought all her furniture from New York, so. Uh, she's got some nice, uh, some nice gear in here. Yeah. So I'm sitting up shop. I got the light on. I mean, for anyone that's done a podcast from home, you know, you know what kind of setup I got here. I was just actually taking a photo when we started, you know, throw it, throw it out there on the social channels, get everyone fired up, DK social, um, you know, but it's, it's, uh, it's nice, but I had a little shower this morning, got the kids <laughs> out the door. Christina took Izzy to school. Beckham's at the library with the babysitter. I mean. It's just full on. It's living up dog style life here on a th- on a Thursday morning. So you got the house to yourself? No, Christina just walked in. She's uh, upstairs. I was gonna and say, then I got the dog, but but was, the dog's been having the shit. She's just all over. She's a disaster. I was gonna say, are She's you, like, she she does altitude like you do. Yeah, like you. She needs IVs and and you know triple ply. I was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, if you had the house to yourself, did you try to rub one out before the show started, or maybe after the show, or why? Because. Anytime, anytime, the, the limited time that I have lived with a girl, which is very little, when I did, as soon as I got the house to myself, the first thing I was thinking about was, this is a good opportunity to rub one out here, maybe, you know, I, maybe I got problems, but that's what I thought up, dog. <laughs> Buddy, I, I, I have to tell this story. I, I walked over into Lupul's to get Alex Global's ski pass the other day, and I come in, you know his place, double story, I come in, I knock on his door, I walk in, and then I go, Loops, and I get this faint, like, up, dog, and he's in the far bedroom. And I go in, I go, hey, I'm looking for Alex's pass. And he goes, die, they were staying in that room there. I go, what the hell are you doing? He goes, ah, you know what you know what I'm doing? I go, I've been there. I've been there, bud. <laughs> oh, he's he's a beauty when it comes to that. I go, he's I've been be- there, bud. He's a beauty. Yo, shout out to Alex Goble. Uh, Evan Knapp, our boy Knapper, just bought a nice piece of art off him. If anyone out there is looking for some pretty cool art, I don't know if, does Alex have a webpage or, or how would they... Because I'm telling you, man, his art is next level. And as you know, Beauty Alert is a big-time art guy. I made the introduction when we were up in Aspen for the alumni game. He came over to Evan's condo. And now he's he, he just, Evan bought a piece of art off him. So if you're looking for some cool art, right ups, this guy is, is nails. Yeah, You know what? And and I had a great chat with him about it. Um, you know, he doesn't, like, go after, like, you know, th- people that have influenced him in the past as far as artists. Like, I think Evan and him got in a conversation about, like, who, who influences you in art, right? He's like... To be honest, I just started doing this shit, and yeah. I, I gradually kind of got better and better at it. And I have my own techniques. And for you, that you've seen them, you know, if you look at the ones he's got, Lupul back in the day, like Kurt Cobain, or um, there's, I think he did two Kurt Cobains for Loops, of course. Um, to the one he just did for My Morning Jacket for Lupul's 40th birthday, his girl Ariel bought him one. It's badass. They're like plastered poster on poster with pictures in them. Um, you know, and it's, he, we've been in his garage. It's just shit we sure everywhere. Have. We sure it's have. like his, his little, uh, his little domain. We sure Shrapnel. have. We sure have been in his garage, eh? He's snooping around in there. We were snooping around. <laughs> we were there for the finals. Hey, remember the thing he did for Lundquist at the uh, alumni game? The picture he painted of Hank? Yeah. Wasn't Nasty. it on like a, wasn't it like a, a little suitcase or something? Like yeah, it was, it was. I think it, 
It, it was like a little briefcase or something, but he, he made Hank's hair look better than it does in real life, which is saying something. Yeah, which is hard to do. Yeah, it's awesome. So anyway, we will get something out on uh, on our socials for the guys looking uh, to yeah. maybe, um, you know, bust out your checkbook, dust off the Amex, and fire up a, a little global piece for yourself. Yeah. Uh, that guy's an absolute beauty. Uh, we have had some really good times in Denver. Probably too many good times, but I uh, love Alex Global. Updog, my UFC tour continues. Uh, I'm off to Mexico City after we do the podcast today. Shout out to Billy Quinn heading down there with him. It's an all-Mexican lineup Saturday night, uh, headlined by Brandon Moreno, who uh, used to be the featherweight champ. I never get the... No, the flyweight champ. He was a flyweight champ forever. He's an absolute character. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to a Mexican fight with a boxer or a UFC fighter in his next level. I can't wait to get down there. Uh, it's going to be bonkers. Billy's got a sick setup. We got the owner's suite. Uh, never been to Mexico City, Uppy. I had to fly through Mexico City one time. Um, you were still in the show. You were playing the show. I was down in the Banana League. I was playing in Cleveland. So I had a flight from like Cleveland somehow right to, right to, Right to uh, Cobble. I was Cobble. Going, I was going to Billy Quinn's house for the for the American yeah. League break, and my night kind of got away from me in, in Cleveland. I was having a good time and uh, ended up missing my flight, my my first class flight from Cleveland to Cobble. And next thing you know, up dog, I'm on the milk run. I go Cleveland to Atlanta, Atlanta to Mexico City, Mexico City to Cobble. Coach, business class. Like, one of them was a middle seat, so I gave up my first-class seat, my my direct ticket for the milk run by the the girl I was supposed to meet was in Cabo 12 hours before me. Thank God Billy's house is sick, but that's the only time I've seen Mexico City. You, you've never been either, have you? I have not. And one, uh, you know, one kind of statistic that may, many people may not know is is that Mexico City is is as high as altitude as, as where I am right now in Aspen. I know. Wild. Um you're obviously not getting the same temperature because you're a little bit down towards the old equator there. <laughs> but uh, you're going to enjoy it, man. Everyone I've ever talked to says that the energy in that city is second to none. The restaurants are awesome. The nightclubs and the scene is badass. You're going you know, to probably run into a ton, a ton of Latina babes. That, <laughs> yeah, he, even it'll be Mac Miller be turning heads, I bet. But, yeah. Um, you got anything like any restaurants lined up? Anything? Uh, yeah. So Billy, yeah, I'm sure so, Billy's got the place dialed. Yeah, he's got the place dialed, and he's like, he told me he's like, uh, you're gonna, he's like, you're gonna die when we go in the fights. He's like, I hire these. This is such a Mexico move, right? He's like, I hire these two uh, Mexican Mexico City police officers that are off duty that day, and they basically just in their car, we follow them, and they block off intersections. Like they got their fucking gun out, and we keep. He's like, wait till you see this setup I got for us. Like we're, we got a, like a police escort to the fights. And then Billy has a sick place down there. Can't wait to see it. But yeah, he, as you know, he's fluent in Spanish. He does business there. He knows his way around the city. Um, he's got a great lunch set up for us Friday when he gets in. Dinner Friday night. Fight Saturday. And then we're going to hit a club in Mexico City Saturday night, which I'm which I'm excited for, Updog. Uh, Unbelievable. I, I guess they rock and roll Updog style. Club gets going at 1 o'clock and rocks right till like 4 or 5. Like it's, it's, it's just going full Updog. I, I hope I got it in me. You think I got it in me, fella? Do I think? I yeah. love it. I'm a little jealous, but I got to be honest. You know, we've been separated here for two weeks now, and you've got a you know you got a fun lineup of things going on. <laughs> I got a little Kygo festival this weekend here. It's uh, the Palm Tree Fest. Uh, they've been setting up shop. Last night we had dinner beside Alex from uh, the Chain Smokers, the Mac Daddy. Uh, you know, shout out to our boy Mac L. He's just been buzzing lately. The guy hasn't stopped. His his second gear, third gear, fourth gear is is insanity he doesn't stop um and he's like god you guys got to get out of town like people got to get out of here i gotta i gotta slow this bus down but hey he ain't slowing down uh we we got a good weekend plan i to try to get some ski in here this today i love snow my, out there i love mac l but he can't be pointing the fingers at anyone else i mean he, if you're in town or not he's going full he's going full mac daddy i mean that guy just he lives his life he lives his life he sure does, wouldn't you? Well, I, at whatever, you, I think he's what forty. Let's give him forty three, forty four. He's Benjamin Button, but he's going backwards. He's buttoned up, yeah. Up dog. The weather in Mexico City, just because you brought it up with the altitude during the day, high of today 81, 81, 80, 81. But then at night, she goes down to like fifty. So you can get a nice, you can get a nice base going during the day, and then at night you can break out the nice. I know you like to layer it up like that t shirt with a collared shirt, any better style than throw the leather jacket on. So I like I like the weather, you know. Break out the old nut huggers during the day, and then break out the leather jacket at night. That's my kind of it, fucking, you know. 
It's perfect. And you're going to be at that Ritz. I'm sure there's got a sick pool. Oh, well, you're right. Spa. It's like weather here in Aspen in the summer, bro. It's like it's 80s. It's it's hot. You, you know, float down the river here. Go fucking fly fishing in your undies if you want. <laughs> and, then at, and then at night, you throw on a little leather jacket, eh? Yeah. A little buttoned up. And Button it up, you, man. You go hit the town, fella. Hey, listen, I'm going to I'm gonna go Dana White style here. I'm going to predict my fight of the night for the UFC fight card Mexico City and Updog. Maybe Sunday after the Kygo Festival when the kids are having a nap. Go to your ESPN Plus. Yarier Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega. Rodriguez is a Mexican fighter from Mexico. Ortega is a guy from East LA with a Mexican background. He hasn't fought in a while. This is going to be a good old-fashioned punch-in-the-face contest. Uh, I believe it's going to go a three-round war, but it wouldn't surprise me if somebody got knocked out. But I'm putting it here. DraftKings, baby, fight of the night. Rodriguez versus Ortega. Remember that. I'll remind you Sunday if you have a little time to uh, to watch it because I think that's going to be the best fight of the card. How about even better? I'm going to go on to my app right now because I am in Denver. I'm going to fire that on there for us and then maybe give me a nice little parlay because you went three for four last time. I did, dude. I Let's did. Let's fire that up. Let's get that buzzing for the boys and we'll, we'll, have, we'll have DK Sportsbook fire that out on our behalf. Can't wait. So we got a big weekend here at Mr. Curfew. I got fights. You got Kygo. I love Kygo, by the way. And the Chainsmokers are playing too, both of them? Chainsmokers are here, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Start stretching now, but I get the hammies loosened up. Hey, you're going you're gonna to be moving well, but uh, we'll be right back at Missing Curfew. Welcome back to Missing Curfew Up Dog. Oh, oh, oh. Missing Curfew. Dog of the week. Dog, of, dog the week. of the week. You know what, Ups? This is a guy, we're going to get into this hockey game that was played last night a little later in our rundown here, but this is a kid that I would say over the years, we've probably both been hard on, right? I mean, you're a Fort Mac guy. You, you wanted to play for the oil. You almost did. You grew up an Oilers fan. I love watching Connor McDavid. I love the Oilers faithful. We all want to see those guys win a Stanley Cup up there because Connor deserves it and the fans deserve it. Well, this kid, Warren Fogel, was a kid over the years that, frankly, I know I called out and said he had to be better. He's got to be more consistent. He's got to help out the big boys. Well, he has this year. Two goals last night. I love the way he's taking the puck to the net. He's getting to the net. He's competing harder. He's getting on the forward check. He's got 13 and 16 for 29 points this year. Uh, he's been unbelievable up dog. He's going to have to continue to be that way if the Edmonton Oilers are going to get where they want to go. But he is the missing curfew. Ooh, ooh, dog of the week, ups. Well said, bud. Uh, listen, he got engaged over the holiday. No. Uh, over the All-Star no. break. Yeah, he no. did. But I'm not going to put that against him. I've seen some guys do this in the past, and it gives them a little pick-me-up. Believe it or not, uh, yes, you're hearing me say that. I don't believe it. But what the Oilers need, Obi, and what they've been missing what, at the beginning of the year that separates them from where they are now are guys like Fogel. Guys like McLeod, guys that are all chipping in the second, third, fourth line. You know, Ryan, I love this guy. These guys need to step up. The Oilers are in a situation where it's go-to now. You stay. You look at TSN's trade bay right now, you get all the players up there that are trade bay. Well, Oilers have their first-round pick available. Wow. They know that this is now This is now or never, boys. Like, you got you got a year with dry side of left. You got two with, with McDavid. This is it. So, it's do or die, and, and you know what? I, I, the way this Fogel plays, like he skates up and down the ice. A lot of times, you know, it's it's not flashy. It might work. But what you're seeing him do now is get to the net. Like you just say, he's playing hard. He's winning puck battles in the corner. He's not just the guy that skates the puck all the way up the ice, makes one play, and it turns back and comes the other way. He's doing all the intangibles that are right. Uh, a big reason why, since the coaching change, you know, 13 goals, like you said, 16 apples. And he's chipping in with the little feistiness, 32 pims. Like, get in there. Yeah. You know, he's a big body. Get in there. The Oilers need that. And the fans love it. So, uh, w- well done. The d- d- dog of the week. Oh, 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 oh. Fella. Listen, buddy, you, uh, you're right about the about the oil. And listen, when I watch them play, I, I think they have enough depth up front. For, for the first time in the in the Connor McDavid era, I think I, I would try to add a defenseman. Noah Hannafin, I know he plays in Calgary, but that's a guy that jumps out to me. I know Evan Bouchard and Ekholm have been playing really well together. They've been playing really well together. I, I just think when I look at their team, you can never have enough defensemen up dogs. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that plays out here in the next month. But uh yeah, Ward Fogel, keep going, buddy. Uh he's a big part of that hockey club up dog. DraftKings, baby. This is just bets, bets, bets. The up dog, my man. Victory! We got Bella, one, baby. Bella, Bella. We got one. <laughs> We sure did. We got one. We hit the four-team parlay. Um, Ooh, parlay listen, Cafe. 
you got to love it. And the, the funny thing is, this is typical updog fashion. Obes, I, you know, I picked these four games. I hit you last night. It was, you know, now we're, we're dating back here midweek. I got the Jets over the Wild. That one was done early. Panthers over the Senators. <laughs> okay, then I'm looking. I got the Predators over the Golden Knights, all right? Ballsy they're, they're bet. Underdog. Ballsy That's a, bet. Yes, good bet. Feisty match by the Predators. I got to tell you, our boy Fact Daddy played well. Uh, the goaltending was great. You know, it wasn't the fact that the Golden Knights didn't play well. It was the Panthers played a solid road game. But then I'm looking for this Flyers over Blackhawks game, and I'm like, where the hell is this game, big fella? You're like, <laughs> up dog, she's tomorrow, bud. I go, what? And, but, you know, to our listeners out there, we might do this every now and then because I put you guys in a hell of a spot. Because last night, before this game, this was a plus 7, 750, I think. Yeah. So you guys could either, do, when we're a hammer, double down. You know, if you guys really love the game, double down. I think the Flyers are minus maybe 210 against the Hawks on the road. Not yeah, too bad. It was something like that. But then, or you hedge, or you hedge a little bit. Obi, Obi's not the hedger. We <laughs> should make a t-shirt. Fuck the hedge. Never hedge. Never hedge. Never hedge. But listen, I put, I put the boys in a good spot. It was a great game. I watched uh, I watched most of the first, second period. Flyers just feisty. It was a typical Flyers feisty fashion, Tortorella style. Um, good road win there. And then, last but not least, you know, another big bet last night, which you ended up hitting me while I was at dinner. But Austin Matthews, back in his old barn, back in his backyard, going for 50 goals. I went online, and she was minus 130 on DraftKings. And I said, fucking A. Yeah. Are you kidding me? This I, is a great bet. And then shortly thereafter, you said, what's that lineup, dog? Uh, and, I, mean, uh, I, thought, well, I mean, I thought it was going to be higher than that. I was like... At minus 125, that, that easy money. As Floyd Mayweather says, that's easy work. You just knew, right? You knew that he had 49. He's going into his hometown. I love the Coyotes. Good young up-and-coming team. Probably not the best defensively. You knew. You just had a feeling. Like, great, great bet. That's why DraftKings, the app is unbelievable. Because you get those nice player props up, dog. Easy money, fella. Good bet. Thanks, fella. Yeah, no, it, it felt good. And then... You know, just with, without saying, this guy, what he's doing right now, Obes, like, let, let's be honest, it's it's insanity. Um, you know, 51 goals in 54 hockey games. I, I just think of that as a, you know, we're, we're not too separated from the game. It's been probably five, six years, right? But I, I never was on the ice with a guy that, I, that, that you just knew was going to score at this pace. Like, I had never seen it before. So no. what he's doing is generational. It hasn't been done in 20, 25 years, and it's... It's uh, it's quite the feat, man. I want to I want to see him keep going because young kids out there watching this guy play and and shoot the puck and how feisty he is and how tough. I mean, that's the way you play hockey, and and you just hope that the Toronto Maple Leafs can put together like a little run here and and get in the playoffs because if he scores at this pace, it's hard to shut these guys down. But um, you know what? Yeah. A, what an amazing feat. Yeah, no, it's unbelievable. Um, as we we don't say it a lot anymore, but it was a staple here at Missing Curfew. This guy fucks. I mean, Matthews is yeah. just free fucks. That's all there is to it. On and off the ice, I would assume, too. Um, listen, that's our third parlay cafe of the season. So, all right, stay with us here. That's our third. That a boy, up dog. Get this guy a beer, up dog. Presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsible Buffalo, New York. Up dog, get this guy a Labatt Blue. I'm going back to South Florida where you used to dominate on and off the ice. A good <laughs> vitamin D. The boys are in golf carts. Sergey Bobrovsky, Bob. I remember last year about this time, people were like, oh, we got to trade him. He's making 10 bananas. Listen, I'm no goalie coach, but this guy is absolutely locked in. I took him the other night against the Sens. He played unbelievable. He's won eight of his last nine. He's got a two three nine goals against, a nine fifteen save percentage. He tried to fight Brady Kachuk. I loved it. <laughs> uh, listen, the Florida Panthers, I'm telling you, I got I put my I, I bet him at the start of the year to get back to the Stanley Cup. I bet him again last week. I love this team. Bobrovsky's been unbelievable up Get this guy a Labat Blue. Oh man, for for the listeners out there and the guys that watched playoff hockey last year, this guy was unbelievable. It's like he breathes and just lives for this time of year, man. When when things are getting going and and the games mean so much, he just puts his team on his back, obes, and he's impossible. He's, yeah. He reminds me of like Dominic Hasek when Dominic was just you know in his heyday of of creativity, 
fucking it was was feisty. You know, you just you just love to see these goalies play like that, especially when they're making nine, ten bananas, right? Yeah. Like that's you know, do a little extra. Fucking try to fight a guy or you know, try to do a stack pad save, fucking uh, you know, bring bring the heat. And what he's doing is is incredible. So twenty eight wins, two point three nine goals against. Uh, you gotta love it. So well done. Get that guy a beer. Moving on to my guy. Get this guy a Labatt Blue Light. Patty Kane fell off eighty eight eight hundred apples. Congrats, right there. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Third U.S. born player Obes to hit eight hundred assists. Phil Housley and Mike Medano. Uh, and listen, big weekend coming up. Big weekend. The United Center gets Patty Kane back playing as a Detroit Red Wing against the Blackhawks. And I think you said it best before this. This is a time to have a tribute video, fella. Yeah. Now, listen, we were, we, we've been hard on tribute videos lately, but this is one here where maybe you, you even charge pay-per-view money for it, right? You're like, you can't totally. see, the, you can't see the, the, the video unless you pay two ninety nine, even if you're at the game or something. Listen, I'm probably going to be on the tribute video on the wrong side of it. Uh, <laughs> my boy, Bobby Lou. Lou, guarantee you're going to be on there too. That one goal where he, you know, goes to his backhand, posted in, which then he broke the heart in the celly. That one's going to be on there for sure. But this guy, man, I don't know. It, it, I can't wait to see the tribute. I can't wait to see the response he gets at the United Center. Uh, he's still going up. He coming off that hip surgery. He's still got the jump, man. He's still fun to watch. So it'll be interesting. Get that guy in the bat blue. And then last but not least, a young kid that, you know, when I first watched him play in the World Juniors for Germany, I thought, this kid's got it, right? It's hard to play in the NHL as a young kid. Kind of struggled. Uh, Tim Stutzel. Is that how you say it? Stutzel, Stutzel? One of the two. Whatever. Hey, German board player. Ah, fuck. Left yeah, shot. What, what's our podcast without screwing up one kid's yeah. name in one part? Listen, he's taking the next step, man. I've watched the Senators play a little, a lot lately in the last 10 days. Explosive. Great skill. Uh, can beat guys one on one, and his compete level is through the roof right now, in my opinion. So get this guy, Labat Blue. You know what? There's been a lot of talk around the league, and I, I listen to you know the Brendan Gallagher interview. And maybe he's not the best to judge, but you know that guy plays hard. Is that Stutzel or Stutzel or whatever the hell Stutzel, it is? Stutzel. That's how you say it. Stutzel. Out of boy, you got Stutzel. her. You know what? It's it's stop <laughs> diving, play harder, be like you know, be a German player like Leon Dreisaitl, right? Like you know, play that hard way, like. Don't be flopping around the ice. It's not the it's not the NHL we need. And you know, to to his avail, I think he took that to heart. He's played a lot better. He's played a lot harder. When you have a the captain like Brady Kachuk, you got to play tough hockey. You got to follow that lead. And quite frankly, the fans they need these young players to step up and play yeah. hard hockey. So, um, well done. Nice to get this guy a beer. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure as a German, he doesn't mind putting a few back. No, no. And I hope the Senators get it turned around. I really do. But if they don't, you know where a good spot for Brady Kachuk would be? The Vegas Golden Knights, right? A couple years. I mean, if they how don't many go... more players can they have there? Right? I don't know. I mean, Stone, big, like, listen, four or five listen. guys making 10 Stoner, bananas. Stoner's getting old. He got hurt again last night. I love Stone. Played unbelievable. What, they won the one a cup. But maybe, you know, maybe if Stone in a couple years says, hey, I'm done. My back's jammed up. I got O'Brien back, Lupel back. Yeah. I don't know. I just think he's a, you know, him and Eichel there. I, I, hey, listen, I hope Ottawa gets it turned around, but. Bill Foley likes to pull the trigger. Brady Kachuk, to me, is the best captain in the NHL right now, besides maybe Sidney Crosby. But I love this kid. So, uh, Sense fans, stay with They're playing well right now, up dog. They're, 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 they're fighting hard. Uh, they had a big win the other night against, uh, who did they beat? Oh, they beat uh, Tampa. Big win for them. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're playing for the fucking bottom. bottom. I know, let's, be, let's be honest. Second pl- last in the East, but still. Playing better. It's nice to see the, you know, they play hard. The fans are still going to watch them, and that's important. It's milk carton time here at Missing Curfew Up Dog. We're going to take somebody off the milk carton. Ryan Johansson, good British Columbia guy, scored his first goal the other night in 20 games. 20? <laughs> 20 games. Listen, I like this kid. We, I met him in the stadium series when we were there, and he came by. He said, love the fellow tour, love the podcast. Watched you when you played for the Canucks or something. Made me feel old. But they, they need this kid to get going here. And I think come playoff time, he's been to a Stanley Cup final with the Preds. I'm glad he got one. I'm, I'm pulling for this kid. You know, I got my money on the Avalanche to win the Stanley Cup. They can't win the Stanley Cup without Ryan Johansson contributing. So he's off the milk carton. Keep it going, fella. And at the same time, up dog, I got to throw somebody on the milk carton. Connor Brown, in 45 games with the Edmonton Oilers, he's got O'Brien stats. He does not have a fucking goal. 
Listen, no. I, that that, that I, that's tough, man. Yeah, tough, tough sledding for me. I yeah. don't even know what to say about that. But sorry to cut you off. No, you continue right there. No, that that's... Now, all I got to say right there is like, go to the fucking net. Yeah, right. Yeah, go to the net and say, you know, apologies for swearing here, but this is worth swearing <laughs> for. This is like, you you can't be an NHL or play forward, play on the best offensive team in the league. Watch Connor McDavid and Leon Drysaddle every night make plays the way they do, and you can't. Figure out a way to score a goal. Man. Uh, it's, I listen. I've been there, but I haven't been there. No, like, you've right? never. You've never went forty-five games without one. All I mean, been there has been. A, I've been on the ice. Oh. I played the game. Yeah, go yeah. to the fucking net. Yeah. Stay there. The yeah. puck comes there. Yeah. F- to throw everything else out the window. All like all the noise. Just it's fucking. It's hockey. It's like back. You in know. The, it's like back in the day. If you're at the club. Just hang around the boys' table, all right? There's going to be opportunities for you there. There's going to be opportunities. Totally. Just, just hang around. You hang around. You get an opportunity. But you're so right. Connor Brown, up. listen to the upbeat. Go to the net. And in his defense, he took the whole year off last year, I believe. He has played better, Uppy. He has played better of late. Their fourth line last night was him, Gagne, and your boy Ryan, who I know you like. And they had yep. some chances. But they're going to need a guy like Connor Brown to get it going a little bit here. And come playoff time, he's got to chip in a little bit. You know what I mean? And I will say one more thing about this. Anyone in a slump ever, be more selfish. Yeah. Shoot the puck. Like, go be selfish. You come yeah. in, a, any sort of chance, like, in between the dots, if you come in and you look to pass, shame on you. Shame on you. Shoot. Shoot to fucking score. And just, I don't know, man. It's like, throw your stick in the garbage can before the game yeah. and just come out and get, like, a greasy one. Yeah. And you, just, know how, you know how, like, much it'll pump up those boys when he finally scores? And then hopefully he puts another couple back. But, you know, I, I want the Oilers to succeed. And we just talked too. about it. A guy like Fogel. Fogel, he's just figuring it out. He played harder. He went to the net. Just, just stop with the pony. You know, the the figure skating type shit. Don't go, play hard hockey. Go to the net. It might hit you in the ass and go in. Right? Yeah. might hit you in the pants yes. and go in. Listen, I, we all want the Oilers to win a Stanley Cup. They got great fans. They got the best player on the planet. They're going to have to prove me wrong because I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid this year. There was even some plays last night. Evan Bouchard's got one of the best shots I've ever seen, but there's some plays that he makes out there that I'm like, if he makes that play in the seven-game series against Vegas, you, you may lose the series. I hope I'm wrong because we all want to see them win it, but but time will tell. Sticking with the Oilers, oilers Bruins last night, what a hockey game. Uh, Johnny Forsland and, and, and Eddie Olchuk and our girl Jackie Redmond on the TNT feed did an unbelievable job. Listen, Jake DeBrusque and Louis DeBrusque, what a moment. Uh, you know, you have a beautiful son, Beckham. I can't imagine if you you know he, you you were playing the NHL that he did and you were interviewing in, in an NHL game in his hometown. He pulled out this old thing that he had called the golden ticket that he obviously used when he was a kid to, to Jake saying, if you don't get a golden assist, you owe me 30 push-ups after the game. Jake's response was, I don't even know if I can do 30 push-ups. It was unbelievable, Uppy. Uh, such a great father-son moment. Corey Perry had a fight and a goal. It was a great game with great energy. The only problem was the Oilers lost. Cost me a minus 130, but what a hockey game, my man. Obi, I had a chance to watch this on Sportsnet on this highlighted YouTube thing, 10 minutes, and it was 10 minutes of the highest octane, offensive, physical. Fans were going crazy. Jack Michaels and your boy Louis DeBrus that you just said were calling such a great game. And it was exactly like that playoff atmosphere, man. Like, imagine these guys in a game, like, in the finals. It, it felt like there was so much on the line. Yeah. And it's fucking February. It felt like that game had so much on the line of just, you know, a mistake here or there is going to be the difference in the game. You had, you know, a power play in overtime where McDavid feeding oh, dry sidle in that, in, in that. What a save by Swayman. What a what fucking a save. save, man. Oh, what a save. When he saved that, when they didn't score in that power play, I'm like, Bro, they're going to lose. And what a yeah. goal by McAvoy. I mean, Evander what Kane. A goal. Hey, Evander Kane, could you turn the puck over a little bit more in that game, by the way? Like, he turned it over 50 times. I mean, it was just embarrassing to watch. And then he turned it over, iced it, didn't skate it down. They came out and scored. But uh, game of the year ups. It, it was the absolute game of the year. Game of the year. Um, it's the dog days, buddy. It's the dog days that you like to talk about, which I think it might be time for a dog day shirt. Sure, I'm going to have to talk to Sauce Hockey about that. But unbelievable hockey game. TNT and Sportsnet, great job. Killed on both ends. DraftKings, top titty, baby. Shout out to our winner, Nick Dwyer. 186 points. The captain, Brento, 6th place, 170. Princey in 40th. And I was in 49th again, man. Austin Matthews got me 47.5 points. I still didn't fucking even 
sniff the money. <laughs> uh, but anyways, Nick, we'll send you a T-shirt. Fellas, get in there. We're trying to sell that baby out. We had 61 entries. Get in there. Take on the boys. 1000 American dollars. First place gets a T-shirt and a buttery hat. Up dog. It's the lock of the night presented by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours, fella. Up dog, my man, you're you're in a little bit of a two game skid here, fella. You're in a two game skid. You took the Sabers to beat the Wild, which was a ballsy, ballsy pick. And I had, <laughs> sure I, I had the Leafs over the Ducks. The Leafs beat them nine two. Hammered them. Uppy, go first, fella. Your lock of the night. Ooh, lock of the night, man. There's some great games. Listen to these games Saturday night. You got the Toronto Maple Leafs on the road against the Avs. You got the Bruins against your fucking feisty Canucks. You got the Caps against the Panthers. And I'm going to look right there, fella. <laughs> I'm going to take the Florida Panthers at home Saturday night versus Alexander Ovechkin and the Caps. And just expect Bobrovsky to be kicking, baby. And our boy, Matty Kachuk, to be fucking fired up. Chucky, listen. Chucky, most points in the NHL since January 1st. More than Connor McDavid, more than Nathan McKinnon, more than Nikita Kucherov. I don't want to say I told you all out there, but I fucking told you. The start of the year, oh, you could chuck. He's in one. Give him time. Maddie's on fire. Up dog, I love that bet. I'm going to go to Ball Arena in the Mile High City in your state right now. I'm going to take the Colorado Avalanche at home against the Maple Leafs. And another thing, oh, boys, you might want to take the over in that game right there. Uh, Up dog has got the old, the young Bulls versus the old Bulls, Panthers versus Caps. I got the Avs against the Leafs in what I think will be a high-scoring affair. Next up, dog, we got one of the biggest all-time beauties, face-off guy, get your nose in the circle, Brad Richardson coming at you from the sportsbook at TPC Scottsdale. Fellas, Lucy is upping the nicotine pouch game with breakers. Pouch is packing a little something extra inside. Here's what you do. Grab a breaker's pouch and break the capsule. Yes, with your teeth. It makes a really satisfying pop. Break up your dusty gas station pouches and go to lucy.co slash curfew and use promo code curfew to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and a 30-day refund policy if you change your mind. That's lucy.co and use code curfew to get 20% off and always free shipping. All right, fellas, here comes the fine print. Lucy's products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine and nicotine is an addictive chemical. Up dog, the fella tuner continues here in Scottsdale (laughs) and there's no better fella. In fact, I think this guy came up with the term fella. Brad Richardson. (laughs) I did the hockey DP, Richie kid. 870 matches in the National League. Freshly retired, but thank you for joining us, bud. No problem, boys. Nice to have you in town. Can you hear me loud and clear? I got you. 10-4, buddy. 10-4, buddy. (laughs) 10-4. Yeah, buddy. So it was your birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. That social clip, Princey. So I I texted him. I said, hey, fella, it's Richardson's birthday. You got to find a clip for him. He goes, I got, I got a Richardson file. He go, I go, well, eventually I may get you to send me a file. But it was, it was the bubble playoff when you were in Phoenix, and you were just out there, and I'm talking chatter, fella. Chatter. <laughs> well, the, the building was dead, so you had to, you had to you could hear a pin drop. So it's kind of nice to have some, some kind of chatter going and some energy in the, in, you know, with the team. But, yeah, you love it. You love it. I love it. I, I love your chatter. When you're like, hey, oh, I'm going to hold the guy in the middle here. He's not going to come to you. I'm like, because that's interference, Richardson. I know, that's but that's the, at the end of your career, you're trying to have as much fun as you can and just do anything to you know, keep yourself going in the game. That was a tough playoff with no fans and just like oh, I know. you know, getting yourself going. and Especially against the Avalanche, we're like, we're not going to win this series. So <laughs> you, can, you can talk all you want. And then you're like, oh, fuck McCarr going. Boys, we can't just let McCarr go in the net like that. And I was like, yeah, someone should want to grab yeah, a stick on him. Put a stick get the on lane him. on him. But yeah, um, I wanted to ask you about face off. So, like, when, when did you when did you take so much pride there? Because we were talking about your drafted fifth round to the to the show, and you're an offensive guy in junior. You know, we we're joking that you had 100. We went at 100 points. You get hurt. When, when did face offs become so important to you on a serious note? Um, it probably wasn't until like probably like four or five in, years into my career, and then like probably playing with after playing with Stoli in LA and yeah. seeing like. You know, and then you get to a good team, a winning team, you see how important each role is and how much pride he took in it. So I think that for me, and then I moved on and went to Vancouver, and that was part of my, big part of my role. So, yeah. 
you know, torts loved that compete and that stuff. So when I did it, so I'm like, you know what, this is going to be my little niche to keep my kind of career going and, and moving forward. So I think for me, it became one of those things. And then as you realize how much it got me in the game and engaged and, um, you know, I just had, then I had a lot more fun with it. And I started coming up messing with the refs and doing <laughs> wrestling with guys and like, I used to do stuff where, like, I'd be like, hey, your skate's untied. Like, and, then, and then get in there and snap it quick. Like, the guys would be like, what are you doing? If so you, If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Oh, yeah. So it, I was always trying little things. And, yeah. It is part of the game that um, it gets you involved, right? Exactly. And, and you get to, like, know the linesman. You get to kind of chirp. You get to kind of, do, you know, it's, it's a compete factor where every night you kind of get judged on that, whether yeah. it's good or bad, right? Yeah, for sure. But it also gives yeah. you a lot of opportunity to be involved in games when they're tight down the stretch yeah. or like, hey, fuck, our power play sucks. We just need to start with the puck. So, Richie, yeah. you're on the power play. You know, yeah. Stuff like that. No, there was stuff. And like in Arizona here, I took like th almost honestly every D zone draw on my strong side. So, like, I'd be out there for 10 seconds. I'm like, holy shit. So, I'd want to dig in on that and then get off the ice. But then, like you said, a couple times on the power play, we couldn't win a draw. So, I get out there. Stay a little extra. Right? I try yeah, to stay yeah. a little extra. Talk to me on. Get the fuck off, Richie. Like, <laughs> oh, the front of the net. Hang on. Hey, boys. I'm changing. Changing. Give me one little tip play. No. <laughs> Pretend you're changing, then, like, the quick. Uh, exactly. Uh, big, uh, we're bringing I the puck up. I'm staying on took here. Took the boy. scenic route every time to the bench. But, no, it was just one of those things. And I, I just liked it. You know, you're playing f sometimes fourth line minutes, third line minutes, especially when you're on the fourth line getting nine minutes a night. I just needed something yeah. to keep, keep myself having fun and in the game. And, um, yeah, so for me, it was just a lot of fun and always laughing and trying to fuck with guys was fun for me. It's a big part of the game, man. Yeah. When you look at yeah. Nate Thompson, kept Tom in the league for a long time, penalty yep. kill, faceoff guy. But as a D man that, you know, didn't maybe have the greatest boots, like when, when we lose the faceoffs, I, I like yelled on the bench, like, can we win one? Like, let's mix one in because yeah. you're, you're starting without it. You're chasing the game all night. All Like, faceoffs to me are, are one of the most important aspects of the game. Like, when you're starting with the puck and we got it, they can't score if we got it, eh? That's, that's what I support. Sell, that's, if we got wow, it, they can't that's score. That's brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> someone said, move the puck. I said, why? Did you ever? I don't need to. No. Do you ever remember uh, going like either Ofer or a perfect night on on the draw? You never you went Ofer. I can guarantee that. You know you what? But, but as a centerman, that. when you get like, you know what your faceoff percentage basically is, you yeah. know? Because you're always kind of like, oh, I lost that one. I lost this one. I won that one. There's nights where you're like, oh, for four, for five. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, I'm yeah. gonna, I need to dig in. That's where I started doing that jump almost into the circle i'm like i need this face off so I'll, i'm gonna eat this puck if i have to and spit it out so that's I think where they that created came. that rule richie you can't put your hand on it no, well that knocker. was no that was well stoli that stoli, stoli did that and then they actually tried when my it was my last couple of years they started saying you can't go you can't go on your knees anymore i said what the what are you talking about who put that in you're making yeah. this rule up no until you someone calls me from the league yeah, i'm doing what i want yeah. after a dog fear the boys are saying i can't go like, on my knees have, here, you, have you seen this upshaw skate he's on his knees all the time yeah what do you mean yeah what are we talking about here yeah, I mean that's it was just part of no, why I, mean, I loved you, it. You yeah. took every face off like it was your last one, and that's why you played so many games. But who who was the one guy when you made go to the barn or whatever that you kind of didn't have great success about against? Or one guy that you either maybe learned something for or that just ran you know, your show. And, and a couple guy like that. I remember one game against Boston. I mean, obviously you know who it is. It's Bergeron. Yeah. And he's you know we're going opposite strengths, and it was actually one of the first games of the year for the, we played him from the when I was with the Coyotes. He was up like zero and seven on me, and I'm like I'm gonna knock be taking draws the rest of the night if I don't figure this out. Yeah, yeah. So then that was it. I'm like, I'm just... Did you start yeah. cheating a little more or just oh, get the nose just over? Just get the nose over. I'm like not even letting me see the puck get dropped, you know, in my head, yeah. head so far over, but No, it's him, almost, almost you want to just... You oh, you want to do whatever. And then you look at him and you say, I'm winning one. I know. Like, give me and then one. him and then, uh, you know, it was your boy, the fact daddy. He, he was, I yeah. always found him tough until I kind of... Started to kind of get. I had to watch a little video on him. I'm like, all right, this is how I got to get him, you know. But yeah, I love the fact that he doesn't. Have, he you, you would outwill him eventually, though. He, yeah, he'd probably but, be, all right, but you he, know, he sometimes he could. You know, he's he's really good at. Oh, it. He is. He's smart. So those you, two guys, I always kind of was like, oh shit, I had, I had to be dialed in. You know, also is really good at getting his head over the circle as Ryan Kessler. Kessler's Kessler's good, good too. Kessler was getting, was, that, getting yeah. that head in there and not letting the guy yeah. see it, and, and he yeah. was always dominant. Exactly. Brodziak was a good one. Yeah, Brodziak no, there's a lot of stayed, guys stayed in the league a long time too. Ooh, the other guy, Boyd Gordon. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Boyd Gordon. Good player. He was. Yeah, he was the one guy too. Same thing. If he lost a draw, he come off, smash a stick. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. took a lot of pride in it, and uh, he was another guy. that was like that. Hey, I got to ask you. Speaking of the Canucks, while I got you here, I was just a whatever year anniversary of that stupid fucking brawl we had, and uh, not only do I, I got to relive it the rest of my life of just how I wasn't even on the ice for the brawl and, and how like. Bush League of a move it was, but I guess I've never asked you on air, but like from your perspective, you guys were first in the Pacific at the time. Yeah. Like, well, talk me through it from your perspective. From our perspective, it was a joke. Harley was being a fucking tool well, and sat yeah. up to be big boys. Well, for us, I mean, we, you know, you don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, Torts comes in. He's like, fuck, boys, I'm sorry. I got I can't start the, the Twinkies, the Twins tonight because this, this is their fucking line
And that one poor kid, like that Lane kid, his first ever, he had one game in the NHL, and it was one shift, and he was never played another game. That was his whole career? And that was it. Uh, <laughs> well, he should be able to sue Bob he fought, he fought Kevin Westgrath. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh God yeah. Kevin Westgrath. And that was, you know, that was his shift. I don't think he ever played another game. You could look him up. But, um, wow. So he apologized, like, Torts apologized to this kid. He's like, that was it. So, yeah, that game was, I hate, well, sorry, I hate Bob that. Hartley. is just, that was classless to me. And, it, you know, whatever. But that changed our season, though, because Torts got, he got suspended for 10 games, and we missed the playoffs after being first, and that was after Christmas. You guys were humming at that point. So we that really changed, like, and that just shows you how good Torts was and how much we needed yeah. it. But, um, yeah, that was kind of a Crazy. turning point for, for our season. Few, for oh, a few what reasons. An insight. What an insight yeah. there. I, I wish I would have been on that brawl because I stayed out. I was literally playing six minutes a night for Calgary, and the night before the game, I went out with Gurgis to yell town till you name it. I think I got home at like 3, 4 o'clock. I think, you so started, I, got, I think you started at my house. I, I went to your house the next night. I went to your house the next night. I went to your house the next night. And uh, I get to the rink in the morning, and the big urn, he's, uh, he's got a, like a twinkle in his eye that I haven't seen since I've been at Calgary Flame. And then I come over, I have a shower, a coffee, heat pack, fire. I'm like, big boy, what's going on? He goes, we're starting tonight, and it's on. I go, what do, you, what do you mean it's on? He's like, we're starting a brawl. Bob just pulled me in. So I was like, all right. I go back on my pregame nap. I'm like, at least all I got to do is fight probably Bexa, and my night's over. Show up to the rink. I'm not even starting. I go to fucking Marty Shalana. I go, you kidding me, Marty? Like, I don't care how bad this guy hates me. You, you got to put me out there over a lot of thought. Schmidt and Chris Well, so I was going to say, he had Schmidt out there. I'm like, I know he, he can handle his own, but I mean. And who? Butler? Butler. Is Butler? He doesn't Butler fight no. anybody. I'm like, I play with him in St. Louis. So then those two guys get punted. We go down to 4D. I haven't slept all night. <laughs> and fucking the little, fr- the little French coach, uh, Jacques, what's his name? Lemaire. Coco or, there. Coco, he's Jacques. a pigeon too. <laughs> he's like, you can't, he's like, you gotta, st- you gotta stay in the game. I'm like, all right. Then Cassian comes over to me. Me and him get a 10. Then Torch comes down the hallway. And I gotta play 25 minutes the last two periods. I'm like, what What happened here? Wow. Like, how did this all happen to me? What a bloodbath. So anyways, anytime I see the anniversary, I think of you because I know you're on that team. And I remember yelled at Torch. He they got him over the glove dryer, and I'm going towards. There's a hockey night in Canada camera right yeah, there. Yeah, this is not going to be good for you. Yeah, he goes, what? I don't care, Holmes. I told you I was coming. But, but I'm not lying, boys. If if Big Ground, if Big Earn doesn't grab him, I got front row Hartley and Torts in the visiting That would have been the best thing of all I time. I wasn't getting in. No. I might have gave Hartley one on the ground. Okay. <laughs> Torts. <laughs> Triple one. one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> give it, I don't I know. <laughs> that would have been all time. But I respect Tor- the hell out of Torts, though. He sticks uh, up I for his teammates. Torts. I love His torts. team. That's He cares so much that... What other yeah. coach would go down and try to fight the other coach in the right. NHL? No, I like, uh, this isn't Colbert like Cougars talking, versus the yeah. old Wellington Dukes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, the old Duke Dome. <laughs> <of Hawaii>. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's not a lot of coaches where, where other coaches want to kick his ass so bad. Yeah. But no. I felt like that Hartley had a target. And then the fact that he wouldn't even oh. look at Torts on the bench no. too, like he wouldn't oh, like, and he's just like, oh, I'm gonna, you know. Torts kept yelling, "How do you play for this guy, Obi? How do you play for him? Like, well, I don't even like him, Torts. <laughs> I don't even want to play for him. You get me in the van? I'll give me anything." Yeah. Um, yeah, Rich, you were, I know you liked your time in Vanna. It's good yeah. to see Torch doing well here. But I uh, brought the Wasted Management here at the DraftKings Sportsbook. You said the Wasted Management. <laughs> yeah, the Wasted Management. <laughs> That's a good name for it. Yeah, the Wasted Management here at the DraftKings Sportsbook. So, first of all, you've seen this tournament grow. This is home for you now. Yeah. You're your um, unbelievable Arizona Coyote. But talk about just how big it's gotten over your time in Arizona. It's It's been nuts. I mean, I, you know, it's probably been nine, eight or nine years I've been coming to it. But it's just from the first year to now, now it seems like every other hole, like 17's got so much bigger with almost the grandstand around it. 18's just blown up and I have all those bars and stuff now. Now number nine's got a kind of a new setup. Um, it's really crazy. I mean, now this you know, bar like this pops up and right outside the gates. So it's it's really cool to see and, um, you know, there's people from all over the world that come and, yeah. you know, and come for it. But it's always a hell of a week and a long week. They just popped this one up for 25 million. for 25 million here. I just popped this baby up here 25 <laughs> sheets. Right? Yeah. Is this a is this a week like throughout the year? All your buddies kind of call you, especially us when we come to town. But are, do you get the hall pass? Are you like kind of? I mean, yeah, yeah, I get a few. I the get kids a few are nights. in school, but kids you know. are in school. I get a few nights. My, yeah. my my parents are here, so they're always willing to babysit and help out. But no, it's it's a fun weekend. I think everyone here wants to go have fun and enjoy because it it's once a year, and you kind of you know blow it out and. Rest hey, when did, you, you know? did you ever try to become a Thunderbird? I feel like you'd be a good Thunderbird. Did you ever give? He'd be a good Thunderbird too. But you got to live here, right? You got to live here, and, but it's also a ton of work. These guys do a ton. ton of charity work that is like nonstop all year, and it's amazing. But um, and it's I don't something. know if I have the time to do it. But these guys that do it give up a lot. They work, you know, successful jobs, and then they do this charity work all year, and then they put on this tournament for three weeks and almost kill themselves to do it. You, so. give, you give back to the community in different ways. I try to. <laughs> <laughs> but boys, it's it's almost like uh, I try to. <laughs> It's almost that you don't get inv- you don't get um, you don't ask to be a Thunderbird. They basically invite yeah. you. It's like a secret kind okay. of society. So the minute you ask, you kind of no. never get in. Um, and and eventually you'll get like 
you know, I've heard a story. In fact, Horty has a story where uh, these guys randomly called him. It was like, Horty. And then he had met them before. But yeah, um, and we got to have Horty tell us. But, you know, uh, hey, we're tr- planning a trip to Nashville. You used to play there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what can you dial in first? Can you dial in something in for? And kind of tested him, like, to see, see to what extent. How much juice he's got. To what extent he's going to go out of his way to set up, like, you know, six, seven guys on, like, a guy's trip out to Nashville. And that's test number one. And if you finish it, they don't tell you, but you're getting evaluated on how you handle everything. And then you move on, stay at the steps. Wow. And then all of a sudden, you kind of, like, get the letter and, you know, they bring you in and kind of surprise you with a, uh, with a, hey, this is your fucking, you know, your badge, badge yeah. of honor. And then wear this fucked up your, suit. Your velvet, <laughs> yeah. your velvet. Just fucking and then let's, par- suit. And then let's party the really, really hard. Oh, oh, yeah. They, they, they love the this is, Oh, this they're, is they're praying, for, for praying for rain. Yeah. I remember the last couple of years I seen Hordy and I'm like. He's I'm dying. Like, Soaked. you got to be just chafing. Oh, I know. He's got a gold big old bomb going on. Say fucking. Go powdered up. Hey, listen, we talked about it, but my boy's been trying to get in the Pro-Am for years here and he's yet to get in. You you have not played the Pro-Am yet. It's a tough. I've never really tried to, to be honest. And then I've. I, obviously, I would now, but I've never really thought about it. I don't know who like, who's playing. I know, like, like Biss is playing. I don't know if any of the Coyotes guys have played in. Even, like, a guy like Keller it should be a no-brainer. To yeah. Play, yeah. But, um, I, know, I know Shane Doan's played in it one time. Yeah. Kel's a couple Doan's times, played but in it. Maybe a couple pr- times, Doner. Mel- Melman and JJ playing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I've sure, never really I'm tried, sh- but. I'm sure Kelsey, some NFL guys have played in it. Last yeah. year, Aaron Rodgers played in it. Yeah. yeah. Josh Allen's probably out there playing. I know that's a big day, and a lot of people look forward to that day with all the, the, the yeah. celebrities and stuff out there. But yeah, the Coyotes are practicing today, and uh, I text Kelsey. So I said, "What time's practice?" At eleven thirty. I said, "That's my kind of start time." Eleven thirty practice <laughs> at, at the den. That's at my the den. Kind of, at the den. Yeah, at oh, the den. that's not bad. Yeah. Well, I never had eleven thirty practice. Buddy, you would love it. You would love this practice ring too. It's fucking five minutes from where all the guys live. There's yeah. a little breakfast place in there, a nice little there breakfast, lots place. Of good breakfast place. Uh, you go in, you grab Beanie. a coffee. Yeah, yeah you lots of good breakfast read the place. paper, grab a coffee, watch the thing, because the, the dressing room stunk when I played. It's here. redone now. It's, it's redone. It's okay, better good. than it was. Yes, it was stinky. I mean, when the Coyotes back <laughs> in oh boy, when the Coyotes back in 2007, guys become bankrupt, and you know Gretzky was making what he was making. The NHL took it over and said, okay, no one's getting paid anymore. We guys, we owe the ice den, which is the practice rink. We owe them like a couple million bucks can't pay them went into receivership and then basically for two years the nhl ran our team yeah. we couldn't make a trade we couldn't pick up a free agent good, couldn't huh? a little anywhere. job security yeah, yeah. Uh, no i, I still <laughs> got traded <laughs> somehow <laughs> i they found a loophole oh yeah no they managed to make one trade it was me <laughs> yeah <laughs> what a joke to columbus yeah oh, oh that hurts columbus. that's what a stinky stinks. town that is oh, yeah boy. so uh, that stinks but anyway uh you know this this practice facility boys i mean you leave there you're only two minutes from it was the from best. Silverleaf, you're five minutes from DC it was Ranch. The best. Oh, and I, I got it. When we were here, when I was here, when Talk came in, my first couple of years we were at the ice den, then Talk comes in. We don't have a good start of the year. He goes, You know what, boys? We're not doing this anymore. We're driving out to Glendale for practice. So Every we had to day. drive out to Glendale for practice. You're like, Talk, you're too good of a guy. I know. Yeah. We battled this. We battled and battled, battled me and him on this. Ah. And then on game days, we did that for morning skate. We go morning skate all the way out, come all the way back. But oh. you know what? To, be, to his credit, I, it, it was better once we got used to it. Which is that, you know. It's no, no, no. You know what? I'll tell you what. Oh, we got to drive in a car for 45 minutes each way now. And you know what the thing is here? Guys got day rooms. Guys have nice cars. Right, That's true. you got a little Audi. A little no, 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 but you got a little Audi. You fucking, you're driving on, you know, sports cars. It's yeah. terrible for your hips, terrible for your back. It might look good, good it might cock, get laid. Though, yeah, good for your cock. <laughs> but, <laughs> but listen, it is sucked off. Depends what muscle you care about. <laughs> Back's tight, but God, life no, but you need to. If we had a Sprinter van. Oh, no, buddy! But I like most guys got day rooms on game on game days. I couldn't uh, do that because I wanted to come home and see the kids yeah. and stuff. But um, so I got about Drake. five minutes to sleep. Get in a quick right, small bucket, a eh? small yeah. bucket yeah. before you head back. Okay. Eh? Yeah. Hey, just just about the breakfast thing. Were you just breakfast on the road at the hotel, or were you like this guy always had a little spot to go to? Um, it depends yeah. on the city. Like, yeah. in, I don't know if in Chicago we used to stay at that little Sutton place. There's well, a breakfast spot house. across Thank the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I used to go across there. And yeah, but it's few different. No, I had I had my spots. Nashville had a spot. Uh, yeah, sports, uh, pancake we've, pantry in Nashville. Yeah. Um, you go to, you know, Rooster. I was going to Rooster in Anaheim. Yeah, I had my spots. I had fucking Westons, you know. Yeah, but when we had when we like first started, you had to go get your own breakfast. Like my last like eight years, you had team breakfast every day, so it was all set up. You just I know, but it was, nice. everyone was there, and you could wake up last second. Everything's ready to go. I'm at yeah. bar and. You're I was usually trying to stay late in the morning, get a little extra sleep. Just, just a little toast, yeah, yeah, toast the butter on it. Your coffee, boys. I'll see the barn. Hey, so Richie, <laughs> let me ask you this: you're, you're you're now like you know maybe a little bit about your job title with the with the Calgary Flames, and then moving forward, like when they're in town, do you get to go to have a pregame meal with them or with the Flames? Yeah, you know, um, do you get to walk I, in I, there? At training kind of... camp, I, I had some meals with the boys. I went yeah. on a couple of team full flights with them. 
And then, but imagine uh, you walking into the, to the boys. Hey, the boys all respect you. Even the guys that are still there don't really know you. They, they, you walk in that pregame room meal, they're like, fucking yeah. right. It's Richie, babe. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I, did, I try to stay away from, you know, like, yeah. like you see the guys here and there, but I try to give them their space and not like, you know, they're trying to get ready for games. <laughs> yeah, I think more guys like us need to be around the I boys. Know, I know. But <clears throat> I think it pump fires them up. What do you think, Opes? Yeah. I, just, uh, I ain't yeah. getting a job anywhere, so I don't know. Really <laughs> uh, before we get into your role at the Flames here, you, you're a good enough guy to invite me to Flagstaff. What's your track called again up there? Help me out. Pine Canyon. Pine Canyon. Fuck, there's lots of fucking pine and there's lots of canyons. There's a, lots of few other stuff too, though. Listen, remember, remember, remember guest, four days. Four, <laughs> Gary up there? Four days. Gary's up Fuck, there. Fuck, Gary was there. Four days. Listen. I love you, but when I was in that Phoenix, when I was in the Scottsdale airport for my connector, <laughs> I thought this might have been it. I was shaking and sweating, and I'm like, just trying to get over to Panda Express to get a little, the Lord's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, this might be it. Like, this could be it. But four days, listen, we didn't win it. No one drank more. I guess no, no one drank more than us, though. Nobody. No. We drank from the time we got up <laughs> to the time Jess told us to go to bed. But what a spot! Great club, a lot yeah. of good athletes. You, it's a, it's, it's really fun. For kids, I told them it's, a, it's a, it's yeah. a kids' paradise. It really is, and and they're, yeah. Well, that was that was a long week, but four days. I might take the practice. I don't know if you're going to invite me back, but I might take the practice round off. To, although yeah. that's that's, that's the only money I won. What's our boy's <laughs> name? Oh, BB. BB. Jordan BB. Yeah. yeah. He, he's like, we're we get sorry to cut you off, but we're we're starting to play. And he, uh, Richie's like, he'll bet you anything. First hole he goes by, second hole. I go, what's your handicap, buddy? He goes, I'm a five. I go, what do you want to play for? <laughs> <laughs> he got up pretty good. He'll play you 500 bucks a, a hole. Guy. He's a great guy. His it doesn't house, matter what it is. Dude, his house is unbelievable. We had to drive. I could talk. We can cut it if you want. We had to drive his Lambo home the one night because <laughs> my wife, they brought too many Lambos to the fucking thing. <laughs> Matching I Lambos. I couldn't even fit this thing, Richie. And I'm like, Richie's slow wide turns, eh? Fella, slow wide I'm driving turns. this. I, I can't stand that car. No. You can't see anything on the car. You that is a scary. Death almost, it's a death right? bomb. Yeah. It's a tin can on just on steroids. Yeah. 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 Great guy, though. Convertible sorry. or no? No. Uh, no. I, I don't no. know. Yeah. Might have been by the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Wolf of Wall I don't Wall remember. Street. It was like Wolf of Wall Street. Did you try? No. <laughs> <laughs> How did we get home last night? We had a Lamborghini. But uh, what a great spot. They love you up there. But I, no, you know, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, no, they just it's great people, a lot of athletes. And like you said, very kid-friendly. And there's always stuff going on. You got kids camps every day. And the kids just have a great, a great time. And now they're always adding on and doing new things. And they got a new part, like lit part three course coming and different stuff like that. So they're always adding and having, you know, good what's spot. What's that membership like? Is it like um, like yearly? Are people using it all year? Do yeah. people go to Flagstaff? So we in the go up in the, in the winter, and there's a ski nice. hill right there. So we oh, ski. Perfect. We have they put up a hockey rink for the kids, a sledding hill, and all that stuff. Cool. So it is, you know, it's the winter is not as popular, obviously, because but right now it's a hot time to go because the skiing, you know, they got a dump of snow and it's good to ski up there right now. How are the dudes? Hey, how are the dudes? Dudes are, get they, you? Dudes are not bad, you know. Okay. Dudes not like bad, we're stung, bro. We get stung with the dudes, eh? No, they're. I mean. Every amenity, you're like, okay, that's going to cost us. That's yeah. going to cost us. But no, it's it's good. They're doing a good job, and it's always a lot of fun, and it's a great spot. And um, how do the wives yeah. like it? The wives like it up there. They love it. They got do the, the spa. guys get to go. The guys get to go golf, and then the wives do. They got a spa. Yoga. They got, you know, they got pickleball, that. tennis stuff yeah. going on all the time, and hikes and anything you can think of, really. You know, so. And he's got these two scooters you bomb around, and these fat boy scooters. Oh yeah. And a golf cart. You don't have to leave the premises. Yeah, I never leave to go really. To go, if you want to go to the grocery store, and they have people that will go get your groceries if you really want that, like. So it's yeah. it's really a one stop shop. To you should have seen us try to drive these fat boy scooters home with all our merch. <laughs> Remember we almost hit those elk. He's like, "Oh, you got that?" I'm like, I, "I don't know, fella. Like, we're just driving her home." Remember the elk we almost oh, yeah. tattooed? Yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, coming down 18 there. Later You're like, oh, kind of, oh I know. yeah, 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 yeah. Heads. I said <laughs> they were motoring thing yeah. on. Uh, but it's a great spot. Like I said, I'm, my game's getting a little bad. This little high cut now. You, oh, you, really? You need a guy, let me know. If you need okay, yeah. Well, he keep, says a high cut. There. You should see this thing move in the it's sky. Cut, it 60 goes yards, sixty yards. So cut. more of a banana. Oh, oh she's <laughs> a sexy banana. Trust me. You know, you know, you know, you know, it puts Bubba like, hey, Bubba. Okay. Size yeah. this we'll guy. See you tomorrow. We're gonna yeah. tee it up tomorrow. I, yeah, so I can't. I can't hit one right to left anymore. Which three or two years ago I couldn't hit one left to right. So that's how bad I am. Well, I've overfixed it so much that now I, if you ever like hit it straight, obs, I, I hardly can. But wow. But I still got that little punch gym black. If, if I'm under the gun, that's your kind of go to under the gun shot. Little punch gym black yeah. under the gun. Have you ever? I think I talked to you about this, but you've never been to Ireland to golf, or did you go? I with did. I, I went with Stoli uh, during the lockout that year. Our yeah. agency took us over and played a few rounds over there. So did you like it? I loved it. Yeah. Did loved you really it. had to play golf with Donnie Meehan? I did play Donnie and Pat and the boys. Yeah. yeah Pat. Yeah. Well, he's How's a member Donnie's at that Bally Bunyan. He's uh, he's okay. Bally Bunyan, nice track. Really nice. So he's a member there. So we played there. It was a fantastic time. Yeah, it was awesome. We should maybe try to do that before sooner before we. Right? Ye
you know, you played your guts out. You retired last year, and like we all do, your first year when you retire, it's it's adjustment, right? You don't you don't know really what you're yeah. going to do. And uh, I know some days were harder than, than the other for you, but now you found your role with the Flames, and, and just explain to our listeners what exactly you're doing on a day to day basis. Um, yeah, I'm still you know still learning and, and figuring out, but I'm doing you know pro scouting. So I watch. I have my teams in the West that I watch, and they're American League teams, and you know do reports on them and see if there's any way they could fit or how they possibly could fit down the road with our team and. Um, then as, as kind of the last couple of months, I've started doing some more, a little bit of, little bit of development stuff with our minor league team. So I've met them on the road a couple of times now, got on the ice with them, you know, worked on some face off, uh, <laughs> look out for those flames face off. Oh boy, oh boy. Can I, dra- can I bet on DraftKings Wranglers face off <laughs> over? I'll take the Wranglers yeah. over 10 face off wins. So we, yeah, started doing that. I was just in Palm Springs with them for the week and watching games, talking with the coaches, doing videos and breakdown with some of the guys. And so that's kind of fun. And I can still do kind of both things, watch, you know, watch the Coachella team, scout them, watch our team, and then do some help the kids. And just a lot of these kids, you know, the coaches, like it is, the coaches are trying to coach. They, you know, they're not working on trying to help guys who win face-offs or teach them little things. So it's yeah. kind of, you know, one of those things. I'm like, why not help out if you can here and there? And so yeah. that's it. No, it's I, a lot of I know fun. you love, you know, I, I made fun of the, the clip at the start, but that's, you, you love the game and you love getting out there. So that, that's good for you, I think. No, it's good. And you just, yeah, you like look at our careers. We all had good careers, and you want to like see kids have a career like you did, and and yeah. have fun and enjoy their life and do fun things that we've all got to experience through hockey. So I think for me, that's just you just want to help them. Yeah. Just like, hey, this is some things that help me. Maybe try it. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. But at least you kind of give them some knowledge. And I had guys that did that for me in my career, and it, you know it certainly helped. Let me ask you this: Do you think it's harder to make it now than it was when we made it? Do you think there's more talent, you know, top to bottom than there was when we were trying to muck and grinding find a way in the league? I think there's, yeah, I think guys have more skill and, and maybe talent, but I still think there's a lack of drive. Physicality. You know, that uh, truck that extra gym and, say, yeah, yeah, there you go. Just that extra, extra, you know, give a fuck kind of yeah. meter. But, you know, and then at the end of the day, every team that wins has those guys. Big time. So, you know, and some of these guys just not, you know, there's a lot of guys that do have that, but I think that's kind of a lot of coaching is that little bit of extra compete. And we look at it every day. We want compete. compete you know, that's yeah. what it is. Compete in hockey sense and and that's you, you know, what it comes down to. Do you ever find yourself working with these younger guys, seeing like one guy that maybe reminds you of you or reminds you of like a guy like, you know, like, hey, this guy reminds me of Oppie. You know, he has all the tools, but yeah. fuck, if he just figured it out and stayed out of the bars, he'd figure it out. Yeah. And, then, and then how to like approach, because you do, you just said, you want these guys under you in development to all make it and all have a great career. And yeah. how have you been, I miss seeing that compete in guys like, like up close, right? Yeah. Like you are, we're at yeah. the all-star game last week and I'm seeing these guys try to win a skills competition. And I, I miss seeing the compete up close. So what is it like when you see like these young kids who have it, you know, the national hockey league right at the edge of their fingertips, but they need to figure out just something. What's it like well, to talk to these kids? It's, it's, it's really cool. But I mean, like it's, you got to have it yourself. You got to figure it out yourself. Yeah. You can only put, you know, you can tell, talk to them and do it all, but they got to figure it out and then put it into action. But um, there is some kids that you work on. You're like, I have a soft spot for this kid. I think yeah. he has it. You want to see him take that next step. So you kind of give him little factors, little pointers that can maybe help him. But, you know, some guys you talk to, like, you're like, oh, shit, this kid ain't going to get it. You know yeah. what I mean? But I was thinking, what about that's the other way you when you look at oh. a guy, you're like, hey, fella. You, you, know, you, you, you might want to think of something else. <laughs> hey, hey. You do any you do any, you online, smart? You do any <laughs> online courses? Or what are you doing with your off-time? Huh? There's a good online program. You might want to get that real estate right? course hey, there. Hey, do you, so you know how to weld? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're better. You're an iron worker. You should get on the union. You get on the union there, Bob. Hey? Oh, I, I heard the plants play- hiring, yeah. <laughs> I see those plays you made. Are you good at sharpening skates? You're going to be that guy here. No, and there's... But keep working hard, Bob. God, I love you. A hey, yeah. good team guy, oh, bud. Oh, <laughs> no, so, yeah, that's it. I mean, you're just trying to give them tools and hopefully, you know, that, you know, not every, the, the fact is not everyone can make it, and that's it, but, you know, you're hoping yeah. you, know, you affect a couple people and they have a great career. And I get what you mean. For, I, I watch a lot of hockey, and there's certain guys from different teams that I I, that I like right away. And if, yeah. I, if I think if I was their coach, I'd do anything to help this guy. Yeah. And I'd be hard on him, too, at times, but at the same time, I'd be like, fellow, let's get you going. Let's get your game where it needs to be because there's something in you that reminds me of me or, yeah. or my boys or something, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, and I think like most, all of us, we had to compete like bastards to make the league and, and do whatever you had to do. You had to fight sometimes. You just ran around and killed guys, like yeah. whatever you had to do. That, that's when I, I see a kid like that. I'm like, this kid will do anything to make the, the league. Yeah. And that's, we, that's what I want to see, yeah. you know? I, wanna- like, I always laugh because there's some kids where you're, you're, you're like, have you been beat up before? Because I think if you just got your ass kicked one time, let you me, might just change your demeanor and fucking figure it out. Yeah, like, let me you know punch you in the nose once here. Just, <laughs> hurt as much I've never, just get over here for a second. Yeah. I know. You meet guys like in the bar or wherever. You just out and you're like, have you ever? You, you can tell the guys have never been punched in the face yeah. at one time. And you're like, buddy, all it would take you is you to humble you and bring you down to earth is just to be 
You just need to be punched. One yeah, time. you got to face. It, it, I want to punch. It hurts, but you'll get over it. <laughs> you huh? face, I you yeah, just yeah, got to yeah. face that I want to punch. All right, <laughs> there's lots of guys. I think I so might that. like you after, but yeah. yeah. Rich, I want to ask you about your boss, Craig Conroy. I, yeah. I do Connie a little bit of my time in Calgary. Uh, he was always good to me. He, but brutally honest guy, but but good team guy. How, how's it been working with him? And I, I guess I'll also tell. Well, how's your travel? Do you get to pick your own travel, or you talk to Connie? How's that work for you? Yeah, no, it's um, it's really good. I mean. That's the one thing that kind of sold me when Don Maloney called me this summer as our president. Uh, he was our GM when I was with the Coyotes that brought me here. But he he called me and he said, hey, this we think you'd be a great fit. And you can kind of pick your own schedule. Here's kind of how many we see or how many games. But pick your games, go see your guys, and we'll, we'll leave you alone. Yeah, you know? like so that. that's what it was enticing for me. I can kind of – I got family stuff this time, but I can go see this game. So you kind of set it up your, your way it works for you, and everyone does it differently. But it's worked so far, and Connie's been great. Like He yeah. just – He's honest, um, easy, great player. Knows what it takes to you know to be in the league a long time, and um, I know he's well respected around the league as well. Yeah. All right. Last thing for me on the uh, talk to me about when you get to the barn. Do you go right to the scouting room for the food, or, or do you eat before? Because <laughs> like, yeah. you're a national leaguer of 850 games. I know you got a good palate. Do you go in that? How's the food in that scouting room? You know, I, good? I, I, I know Supreme is in the food. That Supreme's dragging me in a couple oh, times. You know, know it's, yeah. it's the price is right. It's yeah. ten bucks for the meal, but um, I don't I haven't been. I've only been in a couple times to be honest. But uh, um, you know, I get there and get my work done, and you know, get out. So, yeah. but uh, no, it's great. Everyone, everyone's very helpful. You know, when you first start doing stuff like this, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Like, yeah, getting well, lineups me, and finding all this stuff. We you started just, this program yeah. not knowing what the fuck we're right? doing. Right? I mean, yeah, you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but no, you guys way, have done a great job. <laughs> without guys like you coming on and helping us and laughing and fucking making our listeners laugh, we would be just no. like, what the fuck? No, you guys waiting? are doing a hell of a job. Everyone loves you. I'm just kidding around. I got to give you shit. A good but chirp. That's no, a good but chirp. I think, you know, you're figuring it out when you're done, like you said, and you, and you just, people will help you. There's a lot of scouts that have helped, and all these guys with the team, Connie and Donnie have helped me. And oh, you got Donnie so, Maloney there. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. my GM here. Yeah. Look out, he might try to take your job. He'll call him right here after. Hey, come on in, buddy. Hey, I'm with Richardson. I know he's not very focused here, <laughs> Listen, he, he brought me in, and did he trade me? He might have fucking traded me, well, too. Well, he got fired after well, that. Well, yeah, he, <laughs> might, he, he was here for yeah. quite a while. He might, yeah. No, so he, he would have traded me, too. Yeah. Fuck. I'll, I'll talk to him about yeah, Vladislav. Yeah, yeah. He, Vladislav Klesa, right? Okay. A demon? Yeah. Yeah, Rusty. Jovo shattered his jaw. Talk about once a first-rounder, always a first-rounder. That yeah. fucking guy. Yeah. 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 He, Jovo Soft. shattered his jaw, and yeah. they needed a D-man Good. going in the playoffs. And Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, I scored on the I scored on Lou my first game. Still top, not over top it. shelf. There you go. Slap. I was in Vegas the night before. <laughs> I told that story. It's great. Richie Babe, uh, I can't have you on without asking about uh, our good buddy Stoli Babe. He's doing mm-hmm. uh, you know lots of stuff. This guy's got more jobs than anyone, but uh, he's looking good on TV. How much do you get to see him? How much do you get to talk to him? I've been texting with him about the LA Kings, and I'll, I, w- I won't bring it onto the air what me and him talk about, but uh, he's doing great stuff for the whole organization. He is. He's kind of the jack of all trades yeah. around there, right? Yeah. Um, you know, does a great job on TV. I mean, I think, you know, Aaron's, Aaron's uh, he's got a great sweater game. Good sweater games. Aaron's, you know, I think when he first started again, Aaron helped him a lot, his wife, with, you know, you know, getting prepared and all that kind of stuff. But he's just, he's seen him grown as he's done that job. And then obviously player development. He's, couldn't ask for a better guy to be around your young guys. Oh, there was a um, clip, him there was a clip of the summer camp when Stoli was running the summer camp. Sure. I think Princey might have fired. It was fucking great I'm sure. chatter. I'm sure it great was. Great chatter. But, no, I mean, I saw him. Do you think he'd ever want to be a head coach? Yeah, does he want to? I, I, I don't know. His, I mean, he just, had his, he just had his, they just had their baby. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think he'd be great at coach. It just depends if you want to do that because that's a lot. That's a big time commitment. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, it so, can't be more more of a commitment than what he's doing Well, he's now. at the rink every day. Every like, day. And he doesn't have to travel. But he doesn't have to travel, right? So that's the difference. You know, he goes and sees some prospects. but. He goes yeah, and sees some yeah. prospects. <laughs> He's the only guy I mean, that would be, yeah. But, no, I, I mean, I saw him. We played Bel Air about a month ago together, and then I was actually supposed to be in Montana with him for a couple of days this week, and skiing, I, I, skiing, it was just too he? busy. So, He's yeah. He's skiing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. He's skiing. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's this legend clothing line he's got going on? Are you tried this he's soft? Not, is it soft? Is I have I think he's just kind of, he's not, it's not his line. He's just yeah, in, kind line. of doing a little endorsement deal. Is there a, a little side package. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, Stoli 2 8 car. Stoli there, 2 8 car, promo code Stoli. Yeah, car. Crispy Rice, I think it is. <laughs> um, I'm still waiting for my invite to Bel Air from that guy, too. He says, I'm busy, Oops. He says, I'm busy. Take the Sprinter down one time when we're down there. I'll, I'll be, just show I'll be down there in the next couple weeks. So, um, well, hit me up because you could be yeah. my perfect excuse. I'll say, I'm coming with Richie Kid, but. Uh, Richie, I love you, buddy. Uh, it's been uh, good seeing you. Thank you for taking time. I know no you're worries. busy. You're a beautiful no girl and your family. Uh, keep going. Keep going. And uh, we'll see you at Bel Air, eh?